commissions will be having our key speakers. So we'll have Anna Jalusic. Uh, she's a former Olympian and alpine ski athlete. We have Marie Boldy. Um, she has her own business called Me You Us, and they focus on giving young people an opportunity to find their passion and work within that as well. Finally, we have Daisy Hessenberger. She's a scientist and adventurer. We'll be starting with Mary. Yes. Um, thank you for coming. Very thank you, Chloe. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Um, so, with some questions. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the core mission of Me, You, Us? And what you'd like, what your advice would be, sorry, for empowering women in leadership roles? Uh, what kind of mindset do you think is key in reaching our full potential? Okay, a lot of questions. Um, so first, to introduce myself, I'm Mary. I founded Me, You, Us. It's a web TV show for youth. So uh, the idea is to foster young people to live up their passion and to empower their full potential. So you have to see it as an audiovisual platform on which I upload videos. So you have three types of video. Mentoring, it's about um, personal development. So I try to inspire them, to give them tools and pieces of advice. I also talk to um, students in schools, universities, during events such as this one. And I try also to share my experience as a founder of a startup so that I can bring like a behind the scene of how it is to be uh, yeah the, the founder of something to really do like what you want to do and I also do interviews so that's the you of the project so I ask young people with various profile to talk about their mission about what they are passionate about so that they can act as role models to other who are still afraid to uh, take the plunge to embark on their own project and also talk shows, that's the S. So it's like round tables. Um, I invite different people with different backgrounds, but also from different age so that we don't have the cleavage, if this is right to say it in English, but like not to have the young generation and the other one before us, not like separate, but really that we talk together and that we really come up with innovative ideas about current thematics. So that's the idea of me, US. Um, so I encourage you to look at our social media. We'll give you the, all the information after the talk. And about the empowerment of um, women. So I think these women are really impressive because they master their mental, but they also show us that it's um, the obstacles that we face, they come from within. So that the lack of confidence, the fear we have, they come from ourselves. So from the moment you are conscious of that, you can start to think about it and then to control that, to be able to construct something with this. And so it's about a way of thinking, about a, a way of seeing things for me, uh, so that if you say, I can't do it, you're right. But if you say, I can do it, you're so right. And so I guess that we are really influenced by um, others' judgments and about their disapproval or not, and especially women, as we think that power and womanliness are two different words or like opposites, but it's not the case. So if you start to change that state of mind, if you give you the right to do what you want, and if you uh, want to achieve something, but if you don't at the same time believe in, in, in that, you're contradictory, so you really have to be consistent. For me, that's really important. And also, um, to overcome others' judgments, I think it's easier than to overcome our self-judgment. So um, you have to be tolerant to yourself. So we know the power of self-confidence uh, about endurance and about a lot of um, work it's true, it's about work, but it's also about tolerance to yourself, to others, to to differences also, because we really think um, in a, we tend to focus on differences, on contradictions, on opposites, instead of being more constructive in the way of um, being tolerant exactly about this. So um, for me, to be a leader first is really to to master your way of thinking. And that brings me to the mindset I think is important to have because if we want to be 
the field, uh, to be at the heart of our mission of life. Um, and if you want to feel accomplished, we need to um, we need to feel accomplished and to do something that matters to us. And so this is why if you find your passion, if you know what you like to do, then that's the first question to ask yourself is um, what do you want and why? Um, so of course, to find the answer, it's uh, sometimes hard. You will be pushed out of your comfort zone for sure, but you will evolve that way. You have to see it like positively and um, so finding your passion is an adventure, life is an adventure, so I guess that um, everyone has its own, his or her own path and so mm, comparisons are not really good for me <laughs> and um, I say so that um, from people I've met with, um, during the interviews and everything, uh, they embrace really an attitude an attitude towards uh, life and for example I met Silke Pan, sorry, as she's German so you may know her and for me it was really inspiring because she she was a trapeze artist and she dropped in 2007 and then that made her paraplegic so she had to continue and so she became a champion in uh, hand bike in 2015 and she's now working with the appeal film at exoskeleton twice so for me she's a face of resilience and that's really a powerful state of mind and she will never give up and i also think of another person that maybe will also inspire you it's Miriam duke she's younger and her uh, journey was to accept herself because from her childhood, she was beaten by her parents, by her schoolmates, and so um, she had to leave her house. And at the age of 15, she was diagnosed with a disease, really, um, it's a heart disease, it's the Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. But she decided to, okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna do what I want, I'm gonna take my own decisions. And she's also really a fighter, and well, she's now boxing, she's doing activities that normally she shouldn't be doing but that's just for me the way of embracing an attitude of life so just to conclude I'd say it's to put you in question that it's really good uh, fears they are hard to handle but keep going and um, so just take up on the adventure I'd say find your calling find your passion and just go and never give up great thank yes. you so much Mary <laughs> thank you <laughs> So now for Anna, um, and then we'll go on. so Anna, you've been a really successful athlete from such a young age, which is very inspiring. Can you tell us a bit about your journey as a female athlete and how you wish to empower women and girls in leadership positions in sports? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, uh, good evening. I'm very inspired by the movies, and it's interesting. I I find myself a little bit of myself in each of them. Right. I started very young. Um, I went to my first Olympics at 15 before I even probably grasped what the Olympics were and you know what the career in sport was. But it does come with its own set of challenges. And I think what my message is now that I've grown up and when I look back is I was so privileged and I didn't even know it. I was never put in a box. My being a girl, my being female was just a fact. It was there. It was there to stay. I was one of the kids. I wasn't a female kid who had the limitations, who had boundaries. I was allowed and I was encouraged to be with the boys, play with the boys, beat the boys, be faster than the boys. And at the time that seemed just so normal, right? I was one of the very few female skiers in Croatia at the time and I never thought that that was unusual. I was never felt made feel that that's unusual. And it was only later in life that I realized how there are people out there still who want to put you in a box, who want to put limitations, who want to tell you that going 130 kilometers an hour down a mountain is too dangerous for a girl, but if your brother does it or if your friend does it, that's okay. And I think for me, kind of having grown out of my obviously um, skiing career and into different roles, I, I go back and I, I do some talks in schools where you know, I want these girls to be proud of their girliness. I want them to never for a moment think that there is something less off because they're a girl. They can do 
everything they want, they can do everything the boys can do, and they can do it better, they can do it faster, they can you know, challenge themselves, and they can definitely be proud of what they are. And what I really hope in moving forward, I want them to set their own boundaries if they want, and I want them to challenge themselves where they can, because I do believe that we should be moving towards a society where we're not boys, girls, men, women, we're people and we all can achieve whatever we want within obviously our own comfort or obviously outside of it. Thank you so much, it's so inspiring to hear, thank you. Um, so, uh, uh, Daisy, <laughs> within the science industry, how would you say men can help in ensuring women are giving the recognition and also the potential for influence that they deserve? Uh, absolutely. So in the science industry, women uh, face additional difficulties and we are facing a lot of challenges in this world and we absolutely, science is one of the solutions to that challenges, so we need a diverse group of scientists working on those issues. And men are part of that solution uh, 100%. Anyone can help women in STEM or help diversity in STEM. And uh, so just be an ally. And an ally, I Googled the definition, an ally doesn't mean you just support someone else uh, achieve their goals. Um, when you say the word ally, you're actually helping each other achieve those goals because diversity in science and diversity in sport and in adventure in life is beneficial for all. So when you are an ally of a woman in science, you're helping each other achieve something better for the world. And so I asked my, so on the Homeward Bound, I went to Antarctica with 80 strangers, 80 women in science, uh, to become better global leaders, uh, to help our planet in the challenges of climate change. And I asked them this morning, my group, saying, you know, what can men do for you? So that's the first thing you can do, is you can ask a woman in science. That's not necessarily a scientist in a lab, it could be a doctor, a psychologist, a dentist, um, an astronomer. So ask them, how can I help you, if you're a man or a woman? And more specifically, uh, some of the things included, be careful of your language. Don't always use the word him when it could have been they uh, or her. And you know, everyone can call people out. If you're in a board or an event and there aren't enough women in the panel and you notice that there's not, it's not diverse enough, anyone can step forward and say, hmm, you know, maybe we want to think about the, di the diversity here. You might want to phrase that slightly differently. So it's not always women or minorities calling people out. Thank you. And also, can you tell us a little bit about your journey in Antarctica? So that seemed really interesting. You went with a group of nine, or with 80 women, you said, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that and how you feel yeah. that can help with <laughs> empower women as well in the science industry? Uh, so I've, I've been on quite a few adventures. I've moved four times in my life. Um, a PhD, four years of science is a bit of an adventure for sure. Uh, but I always thought it for it to be a real adventure and tough and badass, you have to do it by yourself. And that changed when I went there with 80 women <laughs> who were there for me where, from the very beginning to the very end. And so Homeward Bound wants to send a thousand women scientists to Antarctica from all different disciplines, all different ages, racial backgrounds, sexual uh, preferences, all of that, just to bring back better, kinder, more empathetic leaders. And I think, I, wanted, I just want to try something with you. I hope you don't mind. If everybody could close their eyes, even the people with the cameras, <laughs> just close your eyes for a thing, second and uh, think of home, even on stage, yeah. Uh, think of home and what you would see. How, what does home look like? What does it smell like? Is it cold? Is it nighttime, daytime, humid, dry? So you can open your eyes, it's very quick. Uh, that was the thing that shocked me on my adventures on Antarctica, that ship that we were on. So we went 2,761 nautical miles in one ship, 80 strangers. That ship became home. And so when you stood on the Antarctic Peninsula, you always had that grounding point. You could turn around and think, where is that really noisy, sometimes smelly ship? Okay, it's over there. I'm okay. Um, so you can, even on these videos where you, uh, these films where you see amazing environments, uh, there is always home wherever you go, whether it's on a mountain or talking to someone in an interview or uh, skiing and the surfing as well. Um, yeah. And so the biggest challenge was the 80 strangers. People said, how are you going to deal with that 80 women? Um, and it was easy because you're all there for the same reason to make the world a better place. Um, and I learned that we can do, there are people who are doing hard things out there for a good reason. And you, we all can be one of them. Great. Thank you so much. We'll go just back to, um,
Yeah, I think it's interesting, and I really agree with what you said. You know, sometimes it would be nice that if it was the guys in the room calling out for uh, uh, maybe women's representation not being there, because you do feel sometimes that you're always the one who's raising their hand and asking why. You know, why are you speaking for all of us when there's only maybe a 10% of women on the board? And it's not just women; it's you know other minorities as well. Um, I grew up with a very manly, macho stepdad who, you know, he's a guy's, he, he's a guy's guy. He, his favorite activity is just getting a backpack and getting lost in the mountains and not dealing with the world and everything. And somehow he took me under his wing and treated me like an equal. And I think, you know, just knowing that it doesn't necessarily need to come from a woman, that you can also identify with a strong, powerful figure that's male, but it needs to go both ways. They need to believe in you. They need to give you the confidence to be who you are. They need to challenge you. And sometimes I also feel that we tend to be gentler with girls and uh, having a baby daughter of my own, I, I catch myself and I worry that how am I going to raise her to be, you know, just a person and to find her own path and not maybe put blocks in her way and telling you even with the baby you you realize that to a girl you go oh you're so cute you're so beautiful you're so pretty and then with the boy we very often go, oh you're such a strong little boy you're so active and i do it as well and you know i i really don't want that i i want her to be strong i want her to be powerful and i want her to someday look back like i did and maybe only in her late teens realize oh I'm a girl, like there's limitations to this. I never noticed and I'm just gonna power through and I'm gonna do my thing and I'm not gonna care. So I really hope that, you know, for all of the boys and men in the room, if there is a little girl in your lives who you see is passionate about something, encourage her, you know, give her opportunities, give her options, push her to her limits and just for a moment forget whether she, that she is a girl. Thank you so much. Thanks so much guys, you guys have been awesome.